are back at it again. And I guarantee you, I'm not crying on this episode. We're here again. I, oh, and speaking of that, I got to thank everybody, man. Like on for the dear basketball moment that I had, I was really embarrassed to release it to the world. My VP and family gave me support and pushed me and made me do it. And so it went well. And I want to just thank all you guys for the messages, for the love, for everything that you guys were sending my way. Um, Somebody already asked me today, what does it feel like being retired? <laughs> so I would say, um, I feel like I can truly eat whatever I want at this point. I feel like I don't have to worry about how my body, how in shape my body is at this point. Not saying I'm going to get out of shape, but I mean like conditioning wise, I feel like I don't have a lot of pressure on me in a sense of athletes. We have to do a lot to, to play at a certain level. And so I'm very conscious of that my whole life. Like I, my parents, my family know, like I ate a certain way. I was very disciplined in my lifestyle. So I guess now I got a little bit of freedom. So retired life today might've been the busiest day of my life. So I don't want to say that I, it's not busy, but I'm enjoying it, I guess, for the, the day, the week that I've been retired. So just to answer that question, but now let me bring in my two lit crew. We got my, my VP, Paul Garino, my sister, Cole, and my snooker booker, which is me, Madre, my mom. We got us in the building, and this episode is probably going to be a little shorter. There's balance, okay? We hit you with an hour and a half long episode last week. This week, we're going to lighten it up on you a little bit. So let's just get right into it, VP what do you have on our scoreboard? And our scoreboard is just what's happening in the world business-wise, what's happening in the world sports-wise, what's happening, VP? Uh, my one takeaway take from your intro is uh, you could eat some more pizza now. <laughs> oh, yeah. P Come on. What is it? Zoo parties? Oh. Come on. We need that pizza. I love frozen pizza, by the way, people, if you don't know. So, yeah, I'm about to participate. We're, we're going to have to drop your P.O. box to get some, get some random frozen pizzas from people. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So uh, first up, uh, NFL and Nike uh, offered to donate $100,000 to support girls flag football. Uh, 11,200 girls suited up for flag football during 2018-19 school year. What? So dope? wait a minute. They're donating how much? One million? No, 100,000. Oh, man. That's <laughs> not a lot. I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm underwhelmed about that. It's come a long way. You know, Nashe and Nikki both played flag football in, in high school. So yeah. you know, it's, it's come a long way if, uh, and if a company's actually donating to that. Yeah, I mean, it, only, it said only 11,000 girls. Yeah, it's only 11,000. That's about right, because you think about T-shirts and flags, that's it. Okay, so, oh, they're going to cover the gear, though. Yeah. It's just, oh, I, guess, I, guess I, don't know what it, I don't know exactly what it's for. They're just supporting it. Because I know, I just know from business people that sometimes if they say a hundred thousand, that could be in product. But I was just saying, if they give the product and then donate a hundred thousand for like production and all the other stuff that you're going to need, that's lit. But I, it's lit anyway that women can have a flag football league. Wait, is it like every state? Like, what? I need more details. What is this flag football league? I'm retired now. Maybe I should join a league. <laughs> We're thinking it. No, no, no. This is for <laughs> high school girls. For now. You going back to high school? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, we've seen movies like that. But oh, OK. So high school is going to have flag football for women. We're going to go to the next one. So oh, anyways, my gosh. <laughs> oh, what kind of scoreboard? You, you just ruined the whole, the whole. It's just a nice gesture. Yes, I Nike. Good. I think it's good. Because go. we only play we only play flag football during um like Spirit Week or it was um Yeah. All right, here we go. Wall Street Journal, thank you. All right, Wall Wall Street Journal, they want to bring flag football to every high school in America. How about that? Thank you. you. Okay. Do some research, Paul. What? Like <laughs> we need some details. Amazing. Now, see, that's what I was asking. Amazing. Bringing flag football to every high school in America would be dope because there's a lot of women like like Cole played, Shay played. Play? I don't no. think so. I don't, I don't think, think I was allowed to because, no. you know, basketball. <laughs> But I would have played, especially if it's flag football. Like, yeah, I got cleats in there right now. It wasn't flag. They were serious about oh, it. Too. He I was mean, tackling. Serious. Our junior year, Lynn Clayton, our whole team wiped out our senior team. We were like out there <laughs> killing people. So it was, it was flag. But what? It wasn't. 
Yeah, it was bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's bad. you were allowed to play. <laughs> okay, I wasn't allowed to play. I had to stop running track in high school as well because you know it's just basketball. Everything yeah. was about basketball. So yeah. What else, VP? Thank you for finding out a little bit of information. Oh, no problem. <laughs> no, uh, how about did you guys? <laughs> Did you guys see about the Super Bowl streaker that bet on literally bet on himself and yes. claims to won $375,000? I know this whole story. Let me tell you this whole story. We covered it on TMZ. So all kinds of different bets. And one of the bets were, oh, were there going to be somebody on the field, like a, a person on the field? Because that happens usually every time. But the bets were low that there would not be because it's a pandemic and it's a different type of Super Bowl. So this guy had himself and all of his friends make bets that there will be somebody that's going to be a streaker. He knew that he was going to win because he was going to be the streaker. The only <laughs> problem I'm really upset about this because the dummies talk too much. They got caught yeah. because they were bragging about people were saying, oh, you're so dumb. Why would you be a streaker? And he was like, I'm not dumb. I made $370,000. Mm. Why well, would he... Why would wait, he like, tell you gotta everybody? wait like two years to tell the story? Yeah, why would he tell everybody now his friends are under an investigation? He's under investigation. They've given they've given a refund to everybody that bet against the streaker because now it was rigged, and so they don't want those people to lose their money. Why would he tell everybody? I don't understand. You got too excited. Well, uh, I didn't want to hear anything about the Super Bowl since our predictions uh, last time. But I will say this. Why would you bring it up, Snookabooka? <laughs> well, well, you brought it up with the streaker, but I did $200. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, time out. So many things just went wrong. Now, I'm upset about this, the streaker bringing up the fact that he won $370,000. Snook, we lost. And you brought up, you could have just said, hey, I won $200, but you had to say, what is it about people telling the truth? <laughs> yes, I do believe that there was a, a complete split and Paul and I said we were going to go with the Buccaneers because you can't go against Brady. And you two said, oh, we're going to go for Casey. Ah. And I do believe Paul and I um, were the winning yeah, here. you know what? You and Paulino, both of give you guys, a, a rose, give them a both of you uh, guys got it right. And so these roses are for you guys, but I still don't understand why Snookabooka brought it up. And, and not to mention, shouts to Mike Evans winning a Super Bowl. Oh, oh, oh! Cause he's a friend of the show and I'm looking and I think he's gonna be on the show next week, Mike. I think he's going to be on the show next week. So shouts to Super Bowl champ, Mike Evans, wide receiver. He's a friend of the show, and I hope we see him here next week. But, yeah, Snookabooka, tell us how you won 200 bucks. Well, I didn't even know how I won it. The person who <laughs> I helped uh, their AAU team had a box thing going on where you pick the score for the first quarter, second quarter, and my four quarter score actually won. And so, I'd also like to give a shout out to Byron Leftwich, who was one of the coaches for uh, Tampa Bay. Uh -huh. Oh, for real? Yes, he was a West Virginia University quarterback. Yeah, uh, shouts uh, to Byron. Uh, Byron okay, shouts to Byron and Snookabooka. You won, you guessed the, the correct score of the first quarter. Yes. How did you do that? <laughs> I just picked up two numbers. <laughs> Yeah, as I said, she had to call and tell me, "Oh, you just won two hundred dollars." I said, "For what?" Uh -uh, <laughs> see, uh -uh, don't ask no questions. No, Nobody no, no. So this is how it goes. This is how it goes. No, I, I believe Snook picked the boxes, and you it just randomized. You pick a box, and then the scores are at the top once they they randomize it. So whatever the score was, say it was like seven to three and a half. She had seven and three, and so she and her box was that one. Oh, listen, well, I don't know why everybody keeps telling all the details. Snookabooka, no, you <laughs> guessed them two numbers that were in the first quarter oh and God. run me my money. Oh, that's what I listen. I, Snookabooka, I would tell them, do you need my cash app? Do you need my PayPal? What do you need? Run me my coins. What else I'm, you got, VP? I'm glad I can mm -hmm. teach you guys things. <laughs> 
Thank you. <laughs> ah! oh, oh my god. <laughs> All right. Um, so now we're gonna talk about uh FC FCF. I always get it wrong. Uh the beast, the draft, the weekend games, they were lit. Lit um, tea. Um, and let me just say the draft, like it's a different type of feel when you're an owner. I was talking to VP the whole time I was working the Hawks game as the draft was going on. And I'm like mad when people get somebody that we wanted off the board, that was supposed to be our guy. And I'm like really invested. And I'm like, I could see, you know, how a Mark Cuban, you see how those owners are going crazy during the games. There's a 100% chance that I'm going to be that type of owner. Like there's a, a one, like, I don't even know how to behave as a player and you mean to tell me that this is an investment yeah and that we got stuff riding on it like my pride is what fueled me as a player but now okay fellas let's get in formation do i need to come into the locker room and have a little peppy peppy talk like i need to make sure that we are on point okay and so just throwing that out there paul tell us about the draft well don't get mad at me (laughs) <laughs> no, I got, I got, because <laughs> I know you haven't got your stuff yet, but I had to, I had to buy one of the shirts. So, what? <laughs> you beat out the owner, Paul? No, wait a minute. I'm really confused, Paul. <laughs> what? I haven't gotten a single shirt, jersey, pair of socks, the way. headband. Where did you get that shirt get from? Phone. I'm really confused. Well, I don't know. You were supposed to order. You were about to order something, but I don't know what ever happened. So I ordered this T-shirt. And Paul, you didn't get the mother of the owner anything? <laughs> <laughs> I remember what just happened. So I literally ordered. I actually bought it before all that, but I had it like three weeks ago and I was going to wear it. And then I forgot why I didn't wear it on the show. And then I was like, I'm going to wait till the season. <laughs> oh, you got that early pre-order one that they did. But that was no, like. I got, no, I got the. No, no, no. I got the, no, the one after that. Okay, so I'm really confused because I was hoping that it was the pre-order one so that that would make sense because I'm so confused to how I ordered $500 worth of jerseys. I got some for you, Cole Snook. I got you one VP. I ordered a lot of jerseys. And then Mm -hmm. when I went back the second time, because I remembered that they was going to give us a code. So the first round, I didn't even get a discount. So then I remember I... I emailed Lauren and I was like, yo, Lauren, do we get a little discount code? What's good? Like, hook me up. So then she gives me the code and my code doesn't work. I had another $500 worth of t-shirts in there and I was trying to get the code to work and it would never work. And then I just remembered that I didn't even make the order now. Oh boy. (laughs) So so I'm pretty sure they use uh, one of the same systems I use because I got the packaging. I could tell. Because I'm a business owner, remember? Yeah, you're a business owner that's going to write me a letter of recommendation. But I still am very confused about where are my jerseys? I wanted, oh, I wanted the flex at the game after, in my jersey. Bonus, bonus one is I had to do it just because, like, maybe he's going to, maybe, maybe he goes back to the NFL. Maybe oh. he's, he's going to, he has mad hype around him right now. So, you know, obviously like the cards and stuff are trending. So I had to get I had to get a Johnny Manziel rookie card. Oh my god, Paul has went all the way. Paul is here making we know, we know what Paul does. We know what Paul does in his spare time. Makes oh, money. Know. He's okay. here, Cole. Paul is, I'm telling you, that's very smart. Cause so the reason Paul's showing you that Johnny Manziel card is because in our league, the FCF that just launched Saturday was the first game of the first season. Johnny football is in our league. And I don't know if people know how big of a deal that is, but Johnny football was, was highly sought after. Even when he left the NFL on his own accord, I like people wanted him there. The AFC, the, the, is that what it's called? Arena football league. The, all the football leagues wanted Johnny football. We got him. And so it's a big deal that that big a caliber of player is in our bubble right now here in Georgia, of course, because everything goes down in GA. But yeah, who else? So tell me about some of the people that we drafted, because I was really hype about our quarterback. Yeah, yeah. So Quinn Quinn Flowers, he has like all the records at uh, Southern Florida, which is D1 for people that don't know. It's And they're actually at the time they're in the same conference as UConn, the American Conference. Huskies. before you know the the back to the uh, the Big East, uh, 
for the O-line and the defense that we got the ones that are called the block party and the shutdown squad. So I like the names of them. Okay, we got the block party and the shutdown squad. It's very interesting. So it's seven on seven, 50 yards. It's high octane offense. We don't even have kickers because I think I heard Patrick say, like, said no one ever, oh, yes, we're hyped to get a kicker. So they just got rid of kickers all together in our league. It's like two point conversion or bus type style. It's it's amazing. So clearly Shout I'm out invested. To Chris, Christian Salisbury. He was he he was he was trying to get on the beast and he got on the beast. Shout out to Christian, but shout out to Christian's mom, man. I mean, she has self-proclaimed herself the momager title, and I'm here for it. She's tweeting me all the time. She's like, listen, if you pick my baby, you are not gonna be disappointed. He's the one. I mean, her his mom was like really into it. So it really I told him when when we drafted him, I was like, Christian I feel like we're already family bro thank your mom like you know so this is a family affair here okay what else VP we're done that was too much oh we're done so okay so (laughs) I don't know why we're done too much because you upstaged us and came on here with the shirt with the shirt that was three three things like normal and then the bonus Johnny Manziel like the Johnny Manziel card like hopefully this will be one of those whatever millions hundred thousand dollar card uh, what other cards do you have over there that's not worth millions yet uh, i don't know where they're at There's they're called there. ben simmons cards paul thought that he was going to be clear don't you put him in a safe no, like, you always tell me to do stuff like this they're graded they're graded so like they're in like things so i could just like, drop it and like you know snook face <laughs> snook i would like you to know snook tells me this stuff all this stuff like this all the time you need to put that in a safe you need to get a security box you need to, i'm like no one you know, and, and, I, you know why i'm mad i get i can relate to that because like i used to collect things when i was little like a bunch of things then when i moved i pretty much threw it all out because it was worthless and i just it was just the, now now all this stuff's blown up but i got all these old cards and they're not worth anything yeah anymore, and so. and i was as i was saying yeah, Jeter, rookie my VP thought he was going to be so clever. Shouts to more than a vote, by the way. That's this hoodie, more than a vote. Change isn't right. made by watching from the sidelines, but my VP thought he was going to be so clever and get all these Ben Simmons cards. So we don't know <laughs> still yet. We're waiting. <laughs> ben Simmons. Ben on Ben. It's an investment. It's just like a It's stock. an investment. I just don't know why he chose that player. That's right, what I So this is what happened. This is what happened. I was like looking at all those card cravings and all of the whatever. And then, so I looked up a YouTube video. They're like, Oh, which, which hot rookies to buy like their old cards or whatever. And it was like top five. And it was like, Ben Simmons. I was like, yeah, Ben Simmons is good. And I knew he was all-star and all, all NBA, all that first overall pick went to LSU. All that. So I was like, I like, I like Ben Simmons. Too. And everyone always, everyone always uh, uh, downs him. So, well, I mean, it's just funny because he chose Ben Simmons and that card hasn't taken off yet, but we've seen like active players cards taking off right now. We cover it on TMZ like every week. And so basketball player, give me some players, some players to pick. You should have asked me before you went and like cashed out on Ben. I got a Sabrina one too. You got who? Sabrina. Sabrina and That's a good one to have. I had to. Yeah. That's a good one to have. I like that. I got, Oh, Oh, speaking you know who's of car cards, what I want to get next? What? Yeah, I think she's gonna blow up. Diamond, Who? Diamond the Shield. Oh so now, yeah. Asia, Asia Wilson's card now, her rookie card. They're trying to sell it for like eight thousand now. Woo! WNBA is on the rise, baby. So let me tell you whose cards I have. Okay. Kamala Harris, <laughs> Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders. Did you I get them? got. I got the political pack. So, hey. <laughs> yeah, I went and bought that political pack. Paul South to my VP. He sent me the link. I got about three or four of them because I didn't know. Like, I was like, are they going to sell out? What's going to happen? I mean, I feel like. Did they come in? Um, I think I saw. They might be here. I didn't have a thing about the mail. I haven't done mail. Like, the mail is here, but I, like, take days to, like, then open up everything. And so, um, yeah, the. The mail is on the way, but I got, I mean, I think those are going to be big. Like, how can the Kamala Harris one not be big? It's going to be worth some money. And I'm keeping it's like, it. if there was a pack for Obama, there, the Obama administration. Speaking of, oh, speaking of that bonus, bonus, Obama's shoes, one of what? one are coming out. One of one. Did what you does see that mean? Only he gets it? 
No, no, no. They're for, for sale. I don't know. They're That's one a- of ones with a presidential stamp on them with 44 on the sides. But what is this? What? Oh my gosh. Who do you have to kill to get those? What does yeah. the one of one mean? Like, I don't understand there's, what there's that only term only made one. Yeah. So one person gets one pair of shoes. That's it. That's it. And it's, and, it's, and it's President Obama. No, yes, they're like selling true. it. I don't know exactly. I've seen it this week. Paul, I hate when you give us half stories and I have so many questions when I hear well, them. Well, and- it is probably going to be one on one and they're going to probably be about 500 million gazillion dollars. <laughs> LeBron is going to get them. This is not fair. It's going to be Steph Curry or LeBron that gets them. Oh, okay. It was a custom. It was a custom. No, it says custom design Nikes that will sell for $25,000. Okay, so everybody has their own signature shoe and they'll just have, when they make that one for the person that has it custom made, that's it, correct? Probably. That's going to work. So basically, you can get the shoe as long as you got 25000 to spend yeah. on it. You go pay for the shoes up front and then you'll get the shoe. Okay, it says one, it says one of only two pairs exist. Again. Five How is it called one of one and there's two pair? <laughs> oh okay i lied so it's going up for auction starting at twenty five thousand. it's starting on it's starting on friday at 444 because it's 44 of course because he's the 44th president so 444 whatever so, anyways uh, so yeah. over under how much do you think it's going to be over five hundred thousand or under five hundred thousand under five hundred thousand because remember when i looked up the ball that you had it was only worth like ten thousand why is my ball not worth more? And Obama <laughs> loved that ball. It, Maybe it's it worth more him. now, though. Maybe it's worth more now because all the pain. Obama to give me that ball. Let me say That's got to mean something. It's too close. Wait about ten years down the line. It's going to be worth a lot more because right now we're still in that era of Obama, Kamala. So it's it doesn't mean as much now. But wait ten years from now. Then I don't think I'm selling it. I think that this should be a fairly. Well, I don't family. think you should sell it, but I'm saying. All the stuff that's going on now. None of your business. <laughs> oh, it's in the safe. Wait, Renee, I think you got to get that and put it in in your bookshelf for so everyone can see it. Ooh. We're not disclosing. It. Actually, the Snook, don't send it. You gotta, next time you got to see each other. Security reasons. <laughs> I know, but I feel like once I get in office, like because I, I love the show Suits, and if anybody's seen Suits, his office has like. Oh, this is just a signed baseball by Michael Jordan. And this is just a, and they always do that kind of talk on these lawyery rich shows. And so I know that they spent, they'll be like, oh yeah, I paid a hundred thousand for this, but my stuff is all going to be like stuff that I got just experiences. And so that's where that ball is going to go at a certain point. Okay. So that was three, Paul. Was that three? That was three plus bonuses. Okay. So for this segment of remote roses, I'm excited because we got one of, so I meet a lot of friends on the internet and this is somebody I met on the internet, shouts to Sean. What up, Sean? And Sean is an educator and a journalist. Sean is coming through to toss us some roses. Thank you for coming through, Sean. Are you here? Oh, I heard you got a fresh cut for the show. I had to, I had been (laughs) struck. So um, about two months ago on December 11th was Uh the last time I got a haircut because my company and I threw an event where we were um, replanning some things for the new year that we want to go over. So that was the last time I got a cut and I have a newborn son. And Congratulations! Son- Thank you. Um, the, the, the whole crazy thing about that is my son was not expected until January 19th. Ooh. So here I am at the event the entire day. My wife's talking about something don't feel right. I'm like, you, you, you just tired. Like get something to eat, <laughs> lay down. You're going to be all right. And then um, at the end of the event, it's like 11 o'clock. I come home, I'm winding down get ready to go to bed and she's like yo it's it's it's, it's on and popping i'm like what are you talking it's about go time it's go time and rushed to the hospital and well and behold um buddy came that same night what um, night so was it december 11th 13th the 13th, 13th. so okay. he went, we got there around midnight and he was do he was born the next morning um so okay. she was in labor that entire day and that was the last time i actually left the house because you know i teach remotely so i don't have to go anywhere i can't go right. yeah. like that yeah because you're a new baby i don't want to expose um go to Mm-mm. the gym you know potentially yeah, bring anything that. back so Mm-mm. i but love we, that so you talked about you teach remotely what age group do you teach i teach middle school Mercy. oh, oh Lord. Lord. That's the worst. 
the worst. worst. Yeah. Every Woo! time I tell somebody I teach middle school, they're like, oh, poor thing. I got a middle schooler right there in the room. So I already know. And so in the New York or Connecticut area, where are you at? I'm in Connecticut right now. I teach in Connecticut. Yeah, New Haven, actually. What up? Pistol waving New Haven. Okay, yeah. you know, I'm CT. I, You right. know, I know Connecticut well. Right. Um, So I have a question for you because I saw it in your profile on Twitter and I'm curious because if you wrote it in there, you're really passionate about it. What does the Mamba men mentality mean to you? Oh my gosh. So man, me and Kobe are like, me and Kobe are like tight at the hip because um, I was, I'm an immigrant, right? I wasn't born in America. I wasn't, okay. um, I didn't spend my entire life here. I was born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Um, oh. And my dad um, actually, you know, left um, a lot of my family back home, me and four siblings and my mom, um, wow. because he wanted better, you know, for us moving forward. So he, he came here at a very, I was very young. I have very little memories of my dad when I was like two, three, I don't remember much of that, right? So my dad came here because, you know, he wanted to get a, uh, give us a better life. So in 97, um, I was nine years old. I'm 33 now, you could probably figure it out already. Um, Nine, I was nine years old and we migrated to America, right? And we're okay. here. And so in Haiti, like I grew up, you know, relative, very, very poor. Let me not even say relatively. I was broke, we were poor. You know, we were getting by because dad, you know, dad was working in America and sending money back home. So we were able to, you know, go to school yeah. and things like that. Um, but we were relatively poor. And 97, I remember like I, we didn't have cable TV to watch, you know, Michael Jordan or, you know, all the legends of the past or uh -huh. other sports. So in 97 was the first time I actually was exposed to basketball. All we had watched was soccer. That is our country sport, soccer. Okay. So 97, it just happens to be the same year, you know, Kobe came into the NBA in 96. So into that 97 season, that's his rookie year. Yep. So I didn't have a favorite team. I was never a Michael Jordan head and I picked out Kobe. <laughs> Right. I just seen this little bald dude with confidence, you know, at the dunk contest. I remember <laughs> February, I came literally the week of the all-star event. And that was the first time I watched basketball, real, really watched basketball. And I liked him for winning the dunk contest. And he's been my guy since. And my son's name is actually Kobe. I named my son Kobe after. Wow. Uh, okay. Oh, so this is the only poster I have of any. Yeah. So I would say I see him in the background there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. that's crazy. So, okay. And, and, you you just you have a site called Designated Report, right? Mm -hmm. That's what your shirt is. I think I got I got a little something something here. Yeah, we. Have I got a little right. something here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and speaking of Kobe, by the way, so this is a hat from his line. I don't like the way the lighting is showing it, but it's actually lit. Yeah. It says oh, eight oh, and two man. four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got he got me all the way together. Designated Report. Yeah. So tell me about the site. So, um, growing up, I was a huge Stuart Scott fan, right? Middle school, high school, Stuart Scott was like the guy that I looked up to. Um, I wasn't great at sports, but I was great at talking about sports because I had, you know, personality and, you know, I watched it all day. Again, I, a lot of people say you can't talk sports because you didn't play. I said, I can probably talk it more because I spent more time watching it than <laughs> actually doing it. So I'm learning, you know, maybe more than you might not be learning actually in the field. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, I always wanted to do sports media. I always knew that I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to wake up and, you know, host Sports Center like Stuart Scott, coolest hey. side of the pillow. Um, to this day, when I sign off in class um, on, on Zoom, I always tell students, how at a play when you see him in the street. And they're like, what are you How at a play when you see him in the streets? What's up? <laughs> they're like, dude, what? In the actual world are you talking about? I'm like, you'll, you'll know one day. It's Stuart Scott. Oh my yeah. gosh. I love it. So I, I wanted to, to do sports media. So, you know, I went to college. My dad obviously wanted me to be a doctor or some lawyer, something like that. Right. To, 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 to make me proud. Um, but I'm like, we already got doctors in the family. Um, I'm good. I'm <laughs> pursuing what I want to do. So I studied um, journalism. I went to Brooklyn. Um, uh -huh. I grew up in Connecticut, by the way. I know you're a uh, Connecticut legend. I just wanted to point that oh, out. Oh, well, I was going to say, I was going to say, uh, Connecticut's my second home. Yes. Right. Right. Um, so I went to school there uh, in Brooklyn. Um, I got a degree in sports journalism and then, um, I came to Southern. I wanted to get another degree to, um, you know, to, to muffle up a little bit my, my resume so I can pursue jobs. So I started interning. Um, I worked at, I interned at TMZ, um, different websites. Just to my employer. <laughs> so in the process of doing so, 
um, I was just like learning different things that I could, you know, probably one day just, you know, maybe I could create one, right? It won't be to that magnitude, but yeah. I want to be able to write, wake up and write whatever I want regarding sports and, you know, be able to publish it and things Love of that it. nature. So about three years, um, I decided to just go for it. I, was just, I wasn't sure how it was going to work out. I just, you know, went to GoDaddy.com. I signed up for a website. That's what you do. Yeah, I just started doing it. And now, you know, it's it's become, you know, a lot of people have, you know, taken to the content. I obviously have a full team now that helps with writing. Creating Look at content. you. It's, yeah, so. Look at you. Okay, about. so hold on, because th we do this hero IRL. That means hero in real life. Sean, this is going to you. You are an educator. You are a journalist. You have made a way here and you are already that news reporter show. It's already there. This is for designated report. All of that, Sean, Appreciate like that. all that. the roses. I love to hear it. Appreciate that. Just get it done. Art, are you ready to give us some hints? So yeah, you can uh, tell us, don't tell us who it is, but we call it giving out roses as in you have our notepads here to guess like mm -hmm. this is a real thing. So yeah. are you ready? Yeah, um, I, I just want to note that last, I watched last week's, I don't know if it was last week's, but when Glenn was on, Glenn and I are childhood. Two weeks ago, Glenn, oh, y'all know each other? Yeah, we went to school together. We grew up in, man, Glenn and I are from the sandbox. I watched Crazy. this episode, yeah. Um, and he actually stole the person that I would want to do, Warwick Dunn. I love Warwick Dunn. So I told him, I texted him, I was like, bro, you stole. <laughs> what? Shouts to Warwick <laughs> Dunn. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, because um, you guys, I know I watched the episode where you guys talked about um, how he's buying homes for a lot of single moms and stuff like that. A lot of people don't know one of those single moms child or child was Deshaun Watson. He is a product yeah. of yeah no yeah and now they have like this really close relationship where we're done another one okay like what yeah yeah <laughs> wow that's lit thank you for that other little nugget okay so so we know you're no, done no, that's not him. In, <laughs> we know he's out of the elimination so <laughs> hit number one let's get it popping okay i'm probably not as good as glenn is at this because oh you're great <laughs> all right so this player is um I know I'm gonna give it away really really soon. He oh. was a number one draft pick in the NBA, and he is. I'm just gonna be a little weird. Do you have this planned out yet, or is this off the dome? Nope, I have it right here. Oh. Yeah, I have it in my notes. <laughs> he, I'm trying to not like give it away too much. Um, okay. he okay. So this player was the number one draft pick with only 11 games played in college. Oh. I know it. Like I know already who it is. <laughs> Let me see. I can't see it. Yeah, I beat Paul though. Man, see, I told you I was bad at this. Yes, that's Kyrie Irving. Uh, <laughs> <that's Akil> <laughs> I, I did it to like the stuff that he done with paying. Well, well, go ahead and lay it on us. Lay it out because I, I don't know Harley and these. I'm still at zero. Yeah. So I, again, I pick Kyrie because he's he's. I think he's very misunderstood, right? Based on how. Yeah, okay, I like it. Um, so he paid off college tuitions for nine students at, you know, an HBCU Lincoln University um, this past year on yep. December. Um, he bought George Floyd's family a home um, recently. What? Yeah. Oh, y'all didn't know that? I should have started with that. I should have led with that. <laughs> yeah, you should have led with that. One. You don't lead with who he is because we know the sports stuff. That's, but that's a fact. Like, that's keep, a fact. keep it coming. I like hearing this. Yeah, he committed. Um, well, you know this. He committed 1.5 million um supplemental income to you know the Kyrie WWE for players who oh, opted oh, out. I am one of those players. Shouts to Kyrie. Right. If I throw I throw one up on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kyrie's um he's definitely one person that I think you know, um beyond all the the Earth is flat stuff that he got you know. Yeah, uh, get past. He's he really cares about the community and he's putting in the work like he's doing. Facts. Mm hmm. Three. I yeah. agree. So, so I won that really. Like. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was way up there. I wrote out his whole name too. And I and just so we are very clear as to what's happened. <laughs> 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 or do you have any more hints though? We want to get all of the stuff out there. Um, so I have um actually I, I have another one, not a hint, but I wanted to give um you your roses because you what? recently announced your retirement. Um, so I'm not oh. going to hit you, but I just want to like, again, 
like you besides basketball of you being a, a UConn legend, you know, we grew up on you. You we graduated in the same class in high school all the way to college. So I again I grew up what? on that UConn Husky team in, in 05 yeah. to 09. But just what you're doing, man, like you you are Thank now, you. you know, fully committing yourself to doing this. And you know, I know how much it means to watch your your dress um the other night of oh, mortifying of mortifying every time somebody says they watched it i'm like oh gosh it was it was awesome it shows how much you know you're giving up right it, it, it sacrifice that's to that magnitude the best thing the way to say it i'm glad you said it yeah like it's you, anytime yeah. you give up anything that meaningful to you it's a huge deal so huge. You, Sean, you know what wow. you know what's, you know what's crazy what i texted cole and snook uh this week and i said i think i'm going to tell sean to uh Give Renee her flowers, and we're like, "Nah, let's not do it this week." And then just did it anyways. Yeah, that's I, crazy. I, that's, I wanted to, but I was a group like, chat without me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we leave you out a lot. You just don't know. <laughs> no, Sean. Honestly, I appreciate that. Especially, you know, you got Connecticut roots. This, you know, I'm like all the way fam in Connecticut. Shouts to Coach Ariema too for what mm-hmm. he said. Um about my retirement but yeah like everybody knows like I bleed blue so when I now I know like we family for real too Sean I like Glenn I had Darius on like yeah yeah, like I I like this whole community of people that I mean we're all like in the same stratosphere but we just hadn't connected yet so love what you're doing with designated report uh let me know if you want to do something like I'm here for you and Holla at a player when you see him in the Absolutely. streets, okay? <laughs> that yes. is 100%. Appreciate you guys. Sean, thank you for hopping on here with us. Congratulations on your new baby. Flowers. Thank you so much. I appreciate Congratulations. it. Congratulations. I'd like to give you some flowers because, as my grandmother used to say, you're working with those kids who start to smell themselves, and that can be kind of difficult. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a mentor, and he tells me, because um, I've taught elementary, I've taught high school, and I've taught middle. He was like, <laughs> You have middle, which is like around the age where they either are starting to, you know, find what who they are, you know, as you know, teenagers, or they just yeah, yet, right. So you got yeah. you got to figure it out and help them figure it out, you know, before mm-hmm. they get to high school and kind of like take their life a little bit more serious. So it's it's tough. Absolutely. Yeah. All look look. Oh, I forgot. Hold on, Kyrie. Here's Kyrie's roses. Here's a little <laughs> bit of Sean's roses. Sean. <laughs> Shouts to baby Kobe. Give him some roses. <laughs> and then this last rose is for your wife. You better be helping her out with baby Cody, Kobe. Right. But shouts to you. And like I said, I'm a holla at a player when I see him in the streets. So absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Keep up. The Thanks for coming day. on, Sean. Absolutely. Thank you. No problem. Have a blessed one, y'all. Thank you right, too. Man. Oh, that was crazy. Like, I really like having company on the show. These people are nice. I like it. Spice it up. Like, spice it up. And now, speaking of company, this week, I went one-on-one with Ray Allen. I'm talking about Jesus Jesus Shuttlesworth, who needs no introduction. But a few highlights that I want to mention. Um... He's a UConn alum, as we were just talking about to Sean. I bleed blue. Shouts to my Huskies. He's won two NBA championships, along with being inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. The guy is a big-time baller. And I asked him a few things in the interview, like, what is it like working with Denzel? The interview was an hour long. I highly suggest you watch the whole thing on Thursday, but check out a little bit of it right now. Okay, so Ray, I always like to start, I want to ask because you're like Hall of Famer, all world, all everything. When did people start to notice that you were above average in basketball? Like when did the chatter start to talk about like, yo, this guy's really good? Probably uh, my freshman year uh, when I got to UConn. Uh, Really? Yeah, well, guys would talk about it. So uh, this is something that I don't share with a lot of people, uh, but we, I guess I had been uh, unremarkable up to this point. Like y- you remember how on campus, when you have uh, the football game, you work out first and then you go over to the football game uh, yep, yep. after when the football games were on campus. Yep, yep. And uh, we, we had like an open scrimmage uh, in preseason and I don't know. I guess I was just so underwhelming up to that point where I, you know, I was getting steals and, and I started, you know, I was this guy that they said they didn't recognize anymore. And then 
afterwards, I put on a nice little jean outfit and some sunglasses. We go to the football game. And uh, one of my teammates, he goes, man, Hollywood has entered the building. <laughs> so so for, for that whole year, they started calling me Hollywood because they started seeing me like show up and show out. And I didn't really understand like how the way the way that you dress. dress. Yeah. And so they started talking about me as, as a player, like somebody who, who really was going to help. And I didn't know how I was going to help because I was an 18 year old kid trying to, you know, make my mark. From Hillcrest, South Carolina, Carolina, just come yeah. on the scene. Yeah. And That's so, crazy. so, you know, let's rewind before you even got to UConn, you and KG, were y'all on the same recruiting trip or what was y'all's connection to, to the recruiting trip? Was it UConn y'all was on the same recruiting trip? Yeah, uh, KG and I, he was from the upper state, upper part of the state. So we had a guy that used to pick us up and take us over to, uh, we would work out in Columbia. Uh, and We'd play against uh, the guys at USC. And so we ended up playing uh, AAU, AAU together. Uh, so uh, UConn was playing at NC State. So he and I got in the car and we drove to the game. We watched these guys play and, um, you know, just hung out, you know, uh, KG was, he was like, man, this is, I had already signed. Uh, so he was, he was like encouraged and excited because he was like, this is, man, this is cool. Like I, you know, this school is great. You know, so you're so happy, happy to see you have you gotten, gotten a scholarship stuff. at a big school. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't and, try to get him to come to the good side. What's up? Well, that's why I was going to say he ended up going to Chicago after that. Yeah. You know, he was in in uh, in South Carolina, and then he ended up getting recruited to play his senior year in Chicago, and then, you know, the rest is history. That's you know, right. he wasn't even going to school, so yeah. <laughs> he just he just cut that whole. He, 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 he got straight to the business. Okay, so we're both UConn alum. Talk to me about it, because I came from West Virginia, went to stores, country. You went, came from South Carolina went to stores talk about just what that was like just culture wise everything like what was that like just getting there well my my background is so nondescript because i grew up in the in the military so uh, i had come from california before i got to south carolina so i didn't really consider myself a country bumpkin as people would would, they would call me uh i did incorporate a little southern accent uh, (laughs) after having been there for for five years and but it was interesting because in South Carolina I wasn't from there so they didn't claim me as being from there and Mm. I still took on a lot of you know the effervescence of what the South was all about you know being there at those impressionable uh years of my life you know from middle school to to high school so a lot of my first happened there so it, it does it did build help build into who I am and and even in the same token if I don't go to South Carolina, I don't end up being the person or the man, the player that I am, because, you know, I had to navigate through being in the South. I had to develop a, 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 a thicker skin. Yes. yes. It made me a little bit tougher because everywhere I had been, you know, I, had, I grew up on military bases. So these places were, they were very controlled uh, people. Everybody was rooting for you. Uh, you know, you had the best of everything. It was like being in a private school enclosed yeah. on a base. And, you know, we had the best lunches, the best textbooks, the best teachers, everything. So when I got to South Carolina, it was the opposite. It was you almost know? a downgrade, not in yeah. nothing towards South Carolina. But if you're already getting that schooling and that treatment and that attention, then I feel like anything is almost a downgrade from there. Yeah. So every school that I had gone to was funded by the Department of Defense. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. so you're talking on these military installations where, you know, when money is going to, you know, our troops, the military, it's providing for these installations all around the world. So the school systems that support the families that are there, the teachers typically are mothers and they get paid very well. Uh, so we, we had the best of everything when I moved to South Carolina, we immediately now are going to a school that's off base. That is basically, you know, we have a segment of military kids going there, but it's all civilian, civilian kids that are, are, are going to school and they're supported by the actual, the County, you know, and just like every other school, a lot of 
circumstances where these children are left behind. You know, the, the teachers aren't very well paid. You know, the schools aren't like you drink the water in the school and it, it was like rust water. Oh. Um, so, you know, my, when my mom dropped us off our first day coming from California, she cried because it was nothing that we had ever uh, experienced or, or, or uh, lived with uh, up to that point. But again, my point, if I never had gone through that, yeah, yeah. I never would have been able to get to where I am because, you know, I had to learn there how to fight, how to uh, protect myself. Okay, look, it's crazy. I really, you guys really have to go check out the full episode. I mean, he dropped some nuggets. Like, what is it like being a basketball Hall of Famer and having a son that plays basketball and doesn't want you to help? Like, what? I mean, there's a lot. It's difficult, it's different, but check out Thursday's episode. And moving right along to my snuck a book of segment, which I enjoy so much. It's called Remote Roots because she's teaching us about American history, Black history, my history. Snooka Booker, what do you have for us today? Okay, so since we're still uh, in the midst of Black History Month, I thought I would highlight uh, a couple of Black historians, from a couple of Black individuals from West Virginia. Let me just put it that okay. way. And because uh, West Virginia is rich in uh, black history roots, so. Come on uh, we, now, I bet you, oh, wait a minute. I bet y'all didn't hear that. West Virginia is rich in black history roots. I'm just as shocked as you are. Right, West Virginia gets a bad uh, name for a lot of things. We're at the bottom of a lot of the list, but when you come to uh, what uh, the black American has given to this nation, West Virginia is very rich. So the first one, let me go with it. And I mentioned him on the first episode, Carter G. Woodson. He was born in 1875 in Virginia, and he was a storm author and journalist. And he is known as the father of Black history. Okay. He's the founder of the Association of African American uh, Life History. He authored lots of scholarly books, and he uh, about the contributions that Blacks made to uh, the development of America. Uh, he, uh, his first connection to West Virginia is that at 17, he followed his brother to West Virginia, to Huntington, West Virginia, oh. to attend uh, a newly formed area. black school, uh, Douglas High School. And I'll tell you about another connection to Douglas High School in just a second. But after he got here, he couldn't afford to live, so he had to put off schooling, so he started working in the West Virginia coal mines, which a lot of people in West Virginia have coal mining history. Uh, well, working. I'm proud to be a coal miner's daughter. Granddaughter. <laughs> great granddaughter. Great, great granddaughter. <laughs> yeah. In 1895, when he was 21 years old, he went back to Woodson and in 1897, he earned his degree. He actually graduated from Douglas High School. And the connection is my husband's oldest brother, Sonny, uh, who's William Johnson, he actually graduated from Douglas High School in Huntington as well. Wow, that's crazy. And so, and so uh, he began teaching at a school in Winona, West Virginia. And in 1900, he actually became the principal of Douglas High School. Oh my gosh. So after that, he went on and he graduated from Berea College in Kentucky. And after that graduation, he worked in, the, in uh, academic supervision in the Philippines. So he went on and went to Chicago and he earned a uh, degree from the University of Chicago in 1908. Hmm. And he was a member of the first black professional fr uh, fraternity, Sigma Phi Chi. Phi, I'm sorry, Sigma Pi Phi, and he was also a That's member. That's the Sigmas? What's the normal name of them? Like, not uh, the full name. He was a professional for front. Oh, okay. Greeks. But let me just add, he was also a member of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Which oh, is we know the Q, dog. <laughs> He's yeah. a Q? He was a Q. And what? so he became uh, the second Black after W.E.B. Du Bois to receive and earn a Ph.D., from Harvard University. Oh, nice. Wow. Okay, and that was in 1912. And so here's his second link to West Virginia. Hmm. After that, and he served as the academic dean of the West Virginia Colored Collegiate Institute in West Virginia Institute for two years from 1920 to 1922. Okay. And that is now West Virginia State University. So he actually was an academic dean 
at my alma mater, West Virginia. Come on, State! And in 1926, he launched the, uh, uh, 1926, he launched the Na Na National Negro History Week, which eventually turned into Black History Month. So that's Carter G. Woods. Mm, okay. okay. And so real quick, I wanted to do, since I didn't I get a chance to do him, and I had mentioned it in the first episode, Booker T. Washington, who was born in 1856 in Virginia, and he actually really never knew the month, day, or year that he was born. This is just something that, I guess, in time, he came up with this date and everything for his birth. But uh, he was an American educator, author, African-American civil rights uh, leader, and he was advisor to multiple presidents of the United States. Oh, wow. Between 1890 and 1915, he was the dominant leader in America, in the African-American community, and also for the Black elites uh, in the community, contemporary Black elites. He was undoubtedly, Booker T. Washington is undoubtedly, undoubtedly the most famous Black West Virginian uh, from this state. You better know it, Booker T. Washington is from West Virginia. Yes. Well, he wasn't, he was born in Virginia, but after emancipation, his mother took their family here to West Virginia because- Well, let's just miss the details, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna claim him, but okay, he was born in Virginia for the fact checkers, but we claim him. We claim him. Well, he came to West Virginia, his mother brought him here because it was a free state and she met her husband and joined him there. His name was Washington Ferguson. So that's where Booker T took his first name, from, last okay. name from was her husband and he had escaped slavery. And they lived in Malden, West Virginia from the age of nine. He lived in Malden from the age of nine to 16. Now, real quick, if you ever come to West Virginia and you go to Rand, you go to Malden, there's a whole big history up there. There's church he attended, one of the schools he was in. Shouts to Rand and Randy Moss is from that area. Randy right? Moss, like, I'm about yeah. to say most. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So after that, uh, he left here. He made his way to Hampton Institute uh, where he is uh, high school and he established the Virginia to educate freedmen. And then his descendants uh, were there and he had to work to pay his way through school. So after graduating in 1865, he returned to Malden to teach for, for both black children and adults. And then in 1881, at the age of 25, he became the first leader for the Tuskegee National and Industrial Institute, later Tuskegee Institute and now Tuskegee University. And one of his books is, is read in most black history classes. It's an autobiography and it's up from slavery. Ooh, so. ooh, up from slavery and it's up and it's up and it's up and it's up and it's West up. West Virginia, don't sleep on us. Thank you. Don't sleep on West don't Virginia. We're out here doing things. Yes. And one more thing next week is going to be a real good one because we're going to do a female famous Black West Virginian who uh, will lead us National Women's Month. Ah, lead us right into National Women's Month. I love it, Snookabooka. Thank you to my two lit crew. Shouts to Sean, shouts to Ray, shouts to everybody. Like, I'm really enjoying this weekly, like weekly. I was having a wild day, got pulled over twice. That's for another episode. But this actually picked my spirits up. I'm feeling good. That's the beauty of connecting while being remote. We'll catch you next episode.